Welcome to another episode of the J&J Sip and Say. This is Jill, the better half of the J&J. Better half, that's questionable, but we'll go with it for tonight. That's right. When I started this podcast, because this was my idea, even though you did come up with the name, I wanted... It's all about the name. I wanted to not necessarily give people advice, but just kind of share our experiences with parenting, marriage, you know, stuff that we've gone through and how we dealt with it and if it worked or not. And one thing we did this year was a 12-hour drive to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Was it 12 hours, roughly? I think it was supposed to be 11 and a half hours. So Straight driving time. 11 and a half hours of driving. And with a toddler, of course, it made a lot longer. And on this episode, we just want to provide some tips and things that we did to survive um, basically a 12-hour car ride with a toddler, an 18-month-old toddler. Uh, that we did back in July. And I will absolutely give Jill 100% credit. She planned. She had all these great ideas to really make the trip uh, enjoyable. Uh, Blair, our son, overall was excellent. We, uh, You had planned out a lot of, like I said, ideas and tips. So, Jill, what was some of the things... Because when you first came to me and said, hey, I want to go to the Outer Banks, or we're going to go to the Outer Banks with my family this year, I immediately thought, man, that's a long drive with a kid. This could be a nightmare. But uh, once we got back, went, th- drove there, had a great vacation, drove back, I was like, she did an excellent job of planning all this. So, Are you giving me a compliment right now? Absolutely. It was a great trip. The vacation was awesome. Um, but to drive a total of... Basically, we were probably in the car for uh, 24 hours with a toddler. It went very, very well. So I wanted to give our listeners, like I said, not tips to say you got to do it this way, just things that worked for us. But on the other hand, you also make fun of how much I plan for stuff. When you started calling itinerary and travel meetings... (laughs) It okay. was a little so intense. There's a story behind that. If you watch The Big Bang Theory, which I'm sure most of you do, we are very big fans of the show. There's an episode where they all travel to some conference, and Sheldon is the travel supervisor, and they have a pre travel meeting and they get all their paperwork. And so, just to spin off of that show, I named myself the travel supervisor. And yes, my mom, me, my mom, and my sister. The women of the family, we all had a travel meeting back in June to discuss details. I think you went to Travel God at one point, but that's cool. No, I did not. You wanted to. No, I don't want to compete with God. Anyways. But I am giving you credit because it went off without a hitch. So let's let's just share some of the things that you had came up with that really, really worked for our trip that hopefully people do have toddlers when they do a trip with their with their kids can can take advantage of and you know maybe if someone's out there listening has more ideas you know shoot us a message on facebook or uh, instagram or send us an email well number one like you said was planning ahead i've always been into doing this i love to map out road trips or look at vacation spots um look up details of where we're going what we can do there so i actually you know mapped out our route and people still make fun of me for using MapQuest but it's amazing I mapped out our route ahead of time I found spots where we could stop I knew how long Blair could probably last in the car and depending on what time of day it was and yes I did make an itinerary for when we we went we left early in the morning now, when you say early, I mean, we're talking early, early. I think we left at, what, 3.30? It was about 3.30. And you basically, we basically had everything packed in the car. And the only thing we had to take down was his pack and play that he was sleeping in. Mm-hmm. Put it in the car and literally put him in the car seat. And within, what, 15, 20 minutes of driving at 3.30 in the morning, he was, he was out. He fell asleep. I think he 
he was quiet for a while and then um yeah he fell asleep because I debated I've always heard people oh well you'll leave right when they're supposed to go to bed well I don't I've never been a big fan of of driving through the night we couldn't check into our house till after 4 p.m anyways and why do you want to show up somewhere super tired because you've driven through the night um, so I, I felt like you know, he went to bed normal that night before and he was at least able to get, you know, a good six, seven hours of sleep in. And then we woke him up at whatever time, like three fifteen. I literally got him up and I put him in the car. I didn't change his diaper. I didn't, I left him in his pajamas. And like you said, within, I'd say a half an hour of being in the car, he was asleep and he, he slept all the way until our first stop in West Virginia. Yeah. Which was about four hours later. Yeah. Cause we stopped about seven fifteen, I guess. Yeah. Seven fifteen, seven thirty. And, um, uh, and the one thing I mentioned there was have everything packed. You know, we weren't packing up any of our bags in the morning or the Really, the, really, the only thing we had was what we needed, like overnight at my parents. Yeah, that so, Friday I mean, night. It was like you said, planning ahead, um, just to be able to basically grab Blair, get him in the car seat, and go. That way, there's not a lot of time for him to wake up and get you know kind of alert. So that was definitely a big plus for that first hour, four hours of the drive. Right, a third of our drive was already done, and he was either quiet or slept the whole time. <laughs> You can't ask for anything better than that. And so our first stop, we stopped at a travel center, you know, get gas. We, another thing we talked about was we did it. I know it's really easy to just stop at fast food places when you're traveling. We're all guilty of it. But the last thing I wanted to make Blair do was, oh, you've been in the car for almost four hours. Let's go have you sit at a fast food restaurant and try to get you to eat and the rest of us eat and wait on our food and everything else. So we actually packed a breakfast for all of us and ate it in the picnic area at the travel centers or rest stops. And that way he could eat really quick. It was ready for him. And then he pretty much just ran around. Uh, and that was one of my main concerns was we, I was going to try not to stop as often, but when we did stop, we would stop for over an hour, it seemed like. In that way, you know, he's 18, he was 18 months old at the time. He doesn't want to be cooped up in the car and he wants to run around. And Yeah, and that's the benefit of for us stopping at, rest stops along the interstate in place of a a fast food restaurant we were able to you know have a picnic space fortunately it was a nice morning and you know he ate immediately you know muffin some milk you know yogurt whatever and then one of us would take him and most most rest stops have some sort of green area walk your dogs you know kids can run around a little bit and we just took a little little bitty basketball and just played with him for like 45 minutes. Just let him run and run and run and literally try to wear him out. And that way when we got back in the car, he was okay with it. And I think that next next uh, span of the trip, within an hour, he, you know, you read him a few books, but he fell asleep pretty quick again. Yeah, I think he fell. I will say the way down, he was a lot better than on the way back. I don't know why. The traffic was a lot better on the way down. That's true. We now, did have a lot of traffic granted, on the way back. Granted, we were going from Columbus, Ohio, where your parents live, all the way to Corolla, which is the northern part of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And once you get past Richmond, Virginia, to the Norfolk area, it can be hit or miss on traffic. On the way down, it was yeah. excellent. Hardly any traffic at all. On the way back, there was construction. There was accidents, so it took a lot longer, but... Yeah, wearing wearing him out at the at the first rest stop really helped the next three hours of the trip, three and a half hours of the trip. As we got him back in the car and we drove another probably at least three hours. And I'm pretty sure he fell asleep for part of it. Um then we you know, stopped for lunch. And then we drove another couple hours, stopped again, let him run around. I mean it I think we made three stops. So for all for an eleven and a half hour drive, we stopped three times but it took us over 14 hours to get there so it took us longer but 
I mean, we do have an 18 month old that doesn't want to sit in the car. Yeah. And when we stopped for lunch, it was, you know, you had, you and your mom had packed up a nice picnic for us and, and you had even scouted out and part of your planning ahead was looking for rest areas because, you know, we can use Google maps or or Google earth, whatever you can see a rest area. Oh, Hey, there's a big park area over here. Mm -hmm. The one we stopped at, there was a ton of trails and little, uh, picnic area. He could, he could run around in and like I said, he ate and we wore him out again. And that was, that was key. Right. Now, when you're in the car, I knew right from the get go when we were planning this trip that I was going to have to sit in the back (laughs) with him. Because there's been plenty of drives to my parents in Ohio, and I'm up front, and he's fussy or hungry and trying to, like, give him toys or feed him a bottle or a snack or something from the front seat is very hard. So I knew for a 12-hour drive, I was going to have to sit in the back with him, which was fine. Um, We just kind of loaded down the front seat with vacation stuff. And then I sat in the back with Blair with other vacation stuff. And I think Jake actually kind of preferred yeah, being um, up front by himself. Kind of a music snob. We listened to a couple of podcasts on the way down and some music. Um, but it's kind of weird. You're driving along and you got you know your wife sitting in the back seat, but... For an extended drive like that, it's it's a must. That way, you know, she could read him books. If he dropped a toy, she could pick it up. If he wanted a snack, he would pick it up, or you could pick it up and get it to him. So, mm-hmm. when he's help. still he's still rear facing too, so that makes it a little more complicated. If I had sat in the front, yeah, it's been and it was pretty boring for him because right he couldn't see because the the car was piled up so high. Um, and one thing. Some people may know this about our son, but most of you may not. He is about 20 months old right now, going on about 55 years old. He has, (laughs) we've always joked that he is an old soul. And he loves Wheel of Fortune. We watch an episode of Wheel of Fortune every night before bed. The first, or the theme of his first birthday party was Wheel of Fortune. And something else that goes along with his old soul is he loves Prince. He absolutely loves, what is it? The artist formerly known as Prince? Yeah. That's what he went by. Yeah, just symbol. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he loves Prince. And it seems like if he gets fussy, you turn on some Prince, the greatest hits of Prince, and the kid will be immediately quiet and content. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it was a benefit to have the greatest hits of Prince in the CD player, but my goodness, I've heard Raspberry Beret and Little Red Corvette enough. Well, his two fa- his two faves are Re- Redberry, Raspberry Beret, and Purple Rain. Those are his two faves. Yeah, and we listened to him quite a bit, but it kept him calm. You know, we didn't have to put right. So whatever music that your kid likes, and hopefully it's not a bunch of kids' bop stuff. Yeah, at least we like Friends. And if you're not, if you don't have kids yet, or you have a little baby, try to turn them on to the music that you like. <laughs> so then, when you have to play it all the time, it doesn't annoy you as much. Another in-car tip that we used that seemed to really help was um, new toys or new books. Blair loves books; he likes to, for us to read to him all the time. And you had you kind of created a, a collection of toys and books that he had not seen. So when he saw him for the first time in the car on the way down to Carolina, he was excited about it. Right. I had started putting a secret stash of new books back for him. He loves books. He wants me to read him books all day long. And so I, and if you've ever bought little kid books, they're kind of expensive depending on what you get. So what I started doing was I started going to the Dollar Tree and they have a ton of little kids' books. Now, granted, they're, you know, five, six-page books. But they have pictures. I mean, that's what he enjoys looking at are the pictures. It's not like he's actually reading the book. He loves to look at the I just got him a lot of picture books. And another thing, for Blair's first birthday, my mom bought him a highlights magazine. Well, I call them his magazines. They're little, little bitty <laughs> magazines. 
they're like the little highlights uh magazine booklets that he gets in the mail once a month he loves those and so a couple months leading up to the vacation I started getting those in the mail and I would put them back with his other stash so in the car when he was getting fussy or antsy I'm like oh here's a brand new book that you've never seen and he would just go to town looking at it yeah he just started looking at pictures and another tip um why you're actually you know on your trip Get the, uh, the uh, most rest stops. There's there's booklets that are um, that talk about all the stuff to do in that area. Um, tourism guides, I guess you would say, and a lot of them have a bunch of pictures, and <laughs> several of them are multiple pages. So we each each rest stop we'd grab, you know, four or five of them. You know, if that would last him an extra forty five minutes to an hour, well, that's another hour that he's content. He's getting to look at something new, and they're always free at the rest stop. So. You know, grab a handful and and give them and pass them out to your kids. He's probably gonna buy an RV from one of them. I mean, we we got him in what <laughs> Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. I think got them all over the place. So it's just simple things like that, just something to keep them occupied. And like I said, you know, Blair liking books and, and pictures. It was easy. It's like all right, this is easy and free. So that's what we did. And we did pack up his kind of big basket of toys. Um, so it was toys that he knew. It wasn't, I think I maybe only had one or two new toys for him because I figured the books would be enough. Another thing you uh, you had a wide selection of were snacks. Oh, and I yeah. think any parent listening understands that snacks can be crucial for a, for a young child. Snacks are everything. They are. And you had, like, like I said, a basket choice. Oh, yeah. He... Graham crackers, goldfish, veggie straws. He still loves those Gerber crunchy Cheeto looking things. Yeah, you had some yogurt. We Puffs. Had, we had a big cooler packed in the Yo- back in yeah, case we needed some cold. pouches. I mean, you name it, I had it. And it seems like with kids, even if they're not hungry, but you hand them a snack, they're probably going to eat it just to keep themselves entertained boredom yeah hey, adults boredom eat, i'm hey, sure he, blair must get that from me then yeah you are a boredom eater <laughs> but even when i run with blair and he's in the stroller if he has a couple books and a snack he's he's good to go and i can run over an hour with him in the stroller and he's fine he's got a snack and books and he's ready a couple of things we failed to mention in the beginning. Um, one of them was since Jill's parents live two and a half hours away, he has spent quite a bit of time in the car going back and forth from Indiana to Ohio to her parents' house. So I think that helps. So if you are someone who's going to be planning on doing a trip, even if it's not a 12 hour trip, if it's a three or four hour trip, whatever it might be, you know, take some, take some hour long drives with your kid or an hour and a half and, and just kind of get him used to being in the car more and more and more. I know it seemed to help Blair. He's comfortable in the car. He's used right. to it. Well, he's been doing that since I think the first time I took him to my parents, he was two months old. Yeah. So I think that, you know, get out, you know, take some drives. Even if you're yeah. just going two hours in the car for him is nothing. It's not a big deal. And the other thing, especially for me, cause sometimes I'm, I can be a little impatient, especially with traffic and, and driving um, you just kind of have a set a mental mindset of, hey, this is going to be a long day. You know, we left at oh, what you say three thirty in the morning, four in the morning, and we knew we probably weren't going to get to our destination until four thirty five o'clock that evening. You just kind of got to get a mental mindset of this is where we're going to be. We just gonna, we're going to take our time. You know. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, like I said, Jill had planned so well that Blair was pretty occupied most of the trip and. Luckily, we didn't have too much traffic on the way down, a little bit on the way back, but that wasn't a big deal. Just kind of a mindset that, hey, this is going to be our day. We're going to take this trip and and just try to enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, I guess they say. Because it is long, but, you know, looking back, it was a blast. And I'm not going to lie. There are a few moments where I wanted to pull my hair out. He was never that bad. But you were driving up front. There was a few times... <laughs> I could tell you were getting frustrated because he was getting fussy. He just wanted out. I mean, it was good. Well, I get, I perfectly, I perfectly understand it. It's just, what are we going to do? Yeah. We're stuck in the car and we still have three hours to go. Or it'd be, you know, we knew we had, you know, at least 40 minutes to our next, to our next uh, rest stop. Right. So it was kind of like, 
All right, we just kind of got to entertain him as much as you can. And I actually be up front, and I knew Jill was getting frustrated. But I, I kind of chuckled inside because I'm like, well, you're going to have to deal with this, Jill, because I'm driving down the interstate, and there's a bunch of traffic. There were just times where nothing satisfied him. I would give him a book. He'd toss it. I'd give him a toy. He'd toss it. I would try to – I thought snacks would be the end-all, be-all. Most of the time it was. And I would try to give him a snack. Nope, didn't want it. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do for you. And I think our go-to was, okay, let's put some more Prince on Purple Rain. Prince <laughs> Prince was always seemed to seal the deal. It, it would calm him down, and you'd usually bias because that CD, the first seven, eight songs, he'll, he'll just relax to. it always bias about 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, And there were times on the trip where, and I would recommend doing this, if they're asleep and you are getting close to your next planned stop, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, just keep going. Um, the you- only time we woke him up was the at the very first stop on our way down because we'd already been in the car for almost four hours. And it was 7.15, 7.30. I'm like, okay, he's going to be you know wanting breakfast. And after that, after Beckley, West Virginia, there wasn't very many stops after. That's why I chose that spot. It's pretty rural after that. So I'm like, okay, well, we, you know, we've been in the car long enough. We're not going to chance it and try to go farther. So that's the only time I think we woke him up. If he was asleep any other time, we're like, okay, what's the next rest stop? You know, and then that's where we'd pull out our phone. Yeah. I know people make fun of me for using MapQuest, but that's when we would actually use our phone and look up, okay, well, where's the next rest stop? And we would just drive to that one and stop. Yeah, take advantage of the smartphone when you're traveling. Um, you know, I'm kind of old school. I like to have printed directions, but I also use the phone as well. You can locate a park. You can see what a rest area looks like. Is it going to have a, a wide open green space for them to run around on? Or is there a park off the highway somewhere that you can, you know, go play with them at? So take advantage of your smartphone. Except I always have printed directions as a backup because you might lose reception or, you know, who knows what could happen. But, uh, and I will say you, we arrived in Corolla, North Carolina at our house, the house that we were renting for the week within five minutes of Jill's planned itinerary time. Boom. I was very impressed because we were driving. I was like, I think we're going to be pretty close, Jill. And, uh, I think we were four minutes past the time that, you uh said we were supposed to arrive so kudos to you you did a ton of planning and it worked out excellent if you're looking for any um travel planning or want someone to do it for you i guess i should be a travel agent i'm gonna add that to my next (laughs) career but no you you did an excellent job of hey this is our going to be our trip this is going to be a long drive i'm going to plan out as much as I can. I mean, we had to kind of waver off of it a few times. Like you said, one time he was still sleeping. We're like, no, we're going to keep going. We'll find the next rest stop. We'll find a park, whatever. But to to leave Columbus, Ohio at 3.30 and arrive within four or five minutes, basically 11 and a half, 12 hours away, you did your homework and did a great job with it. That would be a feat even if you didn't have a toddler. No, just to drive. I mean, traffic or anything could happen because mm-hmm. it took longer on the way back. Right, we did have some traffic on the way back. Another thing we did on the way back was the way I had timed it. We weren't going to get back to my parents till about eleven o'clock at night because we weren't leaving until almost nine in the morning. And <clears throat> on the way back, our last stop for the evening in West Virginia, we kind of did the same thing that we did on the morning on the way there. We, you know, got him out. I changed his diaper. I put his pajamas on. We gave him a pouch because that's what we do every night before bed. So we did the, still did the same things. Still did the same bedtime routine, I guess, just to try it. But we did it to try to get him in the car. And it took him a while to fall asleep. But I think the problem was those mirrors that you can put on your You'd your put, back seat. You would put him on the headrest of the back seat, so you right? Could see so you see Blair. Yeah, 
Well, I think the oncoming lights were shining into that mirror and then shining onto him. And so I think that's what was keeping him awake because I'm like, he's tired. I don't know why he's not falling asleep. I think the oncoming cars and also cars behind us, through yeah. the, literally through the rearview mirror, I could see the reflections of those headlights in his mirror, which is you know obviously right in front of his face. Right. So as soon as we turned that, I bet it wasn't 15 minutes later. Right, because it was pushing 10 o'clock and he still he wasn't fussy. He was quiet. But as soon as I kind of faced that mirror, even just turned it more at an angle away from him, he was asleep, like you said, probably within 10, 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that seemed to be, you know, that's one of those things, I think one of us just kind of thought about it, because if not, we might have driven another two hours. So, like I said, these are just some, some things that we did on our trip. You know, I think everyone wants to take their toddler on a trip, a road trip to, you know, see the ocean or, you know see family long uh, a long drive away these are just some things that we did that seemed to really work out because overall i'd do it again mm-hmm. in a heartbeat because we had a great time on vacation but you know the trip with the toddler was not a big big deal for us and some tips while you're on vacation with a toddler is try to stick to the same routine but allow some flexibility i think our first night there you know, we didn't put him to bed till like 9.15, which is late for him. But he fell right asleep because we knew it was just going to be an off day from traveling. And wear them out like we did on the ride there. Wear them out. He slept so great down there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he fell asleep within two to three minutes every nap and every bedtime because he was so tired. And I think one thing we did, we, we kept it pretty simple. You know, we didn't take him to a lot of... of restaurants or whatever you know it was beach in the morning so he you know him walking on that sand would wear his little legs out so then he would nap really good afternoon he'd be in the pool with us so he'd be you know kicking his little legs and all that so by dinner time and he'd be ready to sleep each day so we just really kept it simple but tried to wear him out while he was having a good time another thing for packing don't complicate it we we're fortunate enough to have a washer and dryer in our beach house. If you have that on your vacation, you don't have to pack no. clothing for seven days. I, mean, I think he wore a different outfit every day, but I didn't pack seven nights worth of pajamas no. or socks or anything like that. Three or four nights to take up less room. That gives Towels, you more room for right. snacks and toys snacks. and books and, and things to entertain. And in then the diaper-wise, what I did was I got... You probably get it, depending on how long you're gone or depending on how many diapers your kid goes through. Just go ahead and buy a package or a box of diapers and take them on vacation that way versus trying to stuff diapers in your suitcase. Yep. New box of them, new box of wipes. Um, what else was uh, there's a few other things that you just kind of took, you know, uh, the pouches you bought the store bought pouches instead of making homemade ones. It was just easier. Right. It simplify things. Make it easy. Don't complicate it. It's, it's vacation. You know, you already have a lot of kind of stress going. Simplify as many things as you can. So, like I said, these are just some things that we did that really, really worked for us. Uh, don't be afraid to, to drive 12 hours with a toddler. Just plan ahead. I think planning ahead is the most important thing. And Jill, like I said, did an excellent job of that. So, it made our trip very enjoyable. Oh, and make packing lists. Yes, absolutely. And start early. Don't start packing two days before the trip, you know, get two weeks out, get those swim trunks, get those packed, get those beach towels packed. You're not going to need them before then. So just get ahead of the game, plan ahead. And, uh, hopefully, uh, you have someone like Jill who's going to plan your trip out for you. So all I had to do was hop in the car and drive. So pretty much it's great. Well, Jill, hopefully, uh, some people get some stuff out of this. Enjoy it. I'm looking forward to another trip and I'm sure we'll use the same, uh, the same ideas again. So And as always, make it a great day and sip and say. Cheers.